And you have to have that spirit inside of you. God bless me and give me a good car to drive. God bless me and give me a good house to live in. God bless me and let me take a vacation. God bless me and let me have the clothes I need to wear. But God bless somebody besides me. Add to this moment, dear God, not just me. Prosperity is never just for you. Prosperity is never just for me. It is also for somebody else hooked into the system. God wants to bless the people that haven't got blessed quite as great as you have been blessed. He wants to bless others as well. I hear preachers who really scorn the message of prosperity. And I understand sometimes it's given in a manipulative sense. But the prosperity message itself has always been God's word. Do what's right and I will bless thee. Do what's right and I will honor thee with good. Do what's right and I will strengthen thee. And so there's nothing wrong with the prosperity message. It may be in some ways slanted where it shouldn't be. But God always has promised to bless. And even the people who mock the prosperity a message, they still want their car. And they still want their house. And they still want their good paycheck. So it's not a matter of message. It's a matter of degree. We have to understand in this moment, God supply all my needs and then some. But I have to begin in the spiritual realm. If I'm not right with you, what have I gained? If I don't have a pure heart, what do I have? If I'm not where I should be spiritually, what do I have when it's all ended? But if I am right with you spiritually, you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. If you are meant to be prosperous, you are also meant to think about others. Every day I live, I think, how can other people be blessed? Why? Because I know that there's good people that are hurting and sometimes they're hurting because they don't have a understanding of prosperity. But other times there's just limitations that are placed upon them. They aren't good at interviews. They're not good at filing out a form for getting a job. They're not good at none of these things. It's hard for them when someone else can walk in with eye contact and a smile on their face and walk away with a job, somebody's not going to get that job that would do a better job than the guy that would give you a good old five. Uh, there are those in this hour that find it hard to get a job. There's those in this hour that are discouraged when they shouldn't be. And it takes God to work in our spirit. But you got to care for somebody who's not able to ride the bike as good as you can. you got to care for somebody who's not able to soar as high as you can. You've got to care for somebody who doesn't come across as good as you do. You've got to care for somebody else. There's somebody worthy of blessing, and you may not have anything to do for them, but at least you ought to be thinking, God, don't just bless me, bless others as well. I want your blessing. I think about... Ways that people could be blessed in this city. And uh, I've got a, a person got my last name, and I don't know who he is, but he's big in investments. And in newspapers like Wall Street Journal, you'll see the word Bogle. And I embrace that and think there's somebody in my family that's got wealth. But I think about investments, and I realize... That there's people that are able with the wisdom that they have, nothing else, with the understanding they have, with the intuition that's within them, they're able to know this is a time to buy GE stock. This is a time to, to sell another. This is a time. They know it. They understand that. Why can't we have blessings like that in the body of Christ? Why can't people that are poor understand that there is a way that you can 
make that which you don't have, that there's other ways that you can be benefited, that you don't have to look at the casino and think that that's for you. God's got a better plan than gambling. He's got a way that works that he rewards. And my heart goes out and I wish, and it may never happen, but if there's anything that I could do that would make me feel like my life was complete, would be to say to any smart, intelligent person who's able to reason and think, you're able to make a decision that brings financial reward there is a field of endeavor that could reward you handsomely i believe in this hour that you've got to say god help me to get blessed but don't let it stop with me help me to get blessed but let it go further than this help me to get blessed but lord let somebody else get blessed as well i want you to bless so many today God blesses, God blesses me. Not overly, but adequately. God blesses me. People say, yeah, I see a car you drive. Well, it's leased. I don't own it. You can't own anything. You can only use it. You can't take it with you. And if you work night and day until you're 70, you should be able to drive whatever car you want. I think it makes sense. want to put together a ministry for people that need something just for the day. We want to put together a ministry where that there could be a day labor for both office work and for hand work and all that kind of work for that a person who comes in and then we say to that person, you work all day and you'll have $30 more than you would have had if you watch television. Not a job. But a stopgap measure so that somebody at least knows that they are not at the mercy of the storm that is about them. And we want to see that happen. By God's grace, it will. we got a great name for it. We want to be able to say all across this city, if you need some good people for a day, whether it is in cleaning out a building that has to be cleaned out or, or whatever it is, we got some people that need a little bit. And it's not going to be a job. Somebody would say, well, I wouldn't work for that. It's not work that we're talking about. It's a spare tire. And that little tire in your trunk isn't meant to run 100,000 miles. It's meant to get you from where you are back home again. And I'm talking about spare tires in this hour. I want God to bless I want God to prosper, but we live in a real world, and you have to understand, if God is going to bless me, it will be because of the kind of a woman I am, the kind of a man that I am. It has to be the Lord doing something inside of me. I don't get blessed just because I sown into a ministry. I don't get blessed just because I'm tithing. I get blessed because I'm obeying God, and he is shaping me and changing me and transforming me my life there is no shortcuts to consistent blessing Proverbs says you can have a good farm and still have nothing to show for it and bring in the same crop that somebody else did where can it go number one you may not put it up like you should it might spoil on you number two you may have all kinds of relatives who come and want a bag of wheat and a bushel of corn. They never do a lick in their life and never pay you back. And you find out that you've been giving it to them. They've been selling it down the street so they can support their habit. There's all kinds of ways that you can get an income and not have an effective life. You need the Lord to help you and encourage you. God, I don't want what I have to be wasted. I don't want it to be wasted. I can eat at a, a Greek restaurant for $8 and something, the meal I want. Or I can go like a king's kid and spend 38 well, if I'm enough of a king's kid that I can do it and still have something left, fine. But if I look and I find out I'm not making it from week to week, I better realize that king's kids have got brains. 
And God, give me brains more than money. If I don't have brains, I won't have nothing. I need brains, God. Give me brains more than anything else. I'm asking for brains. I'm asking for brains, God. I'm not asking for the money a king's kids got. If you don't give me the brains a kid kids got, I won't have anything anyhow. I need you to help me, dear God. I need wisdom. I need wisdom, dear Lord. There's never been a time that if you're blessed here today with a good job that there is potentially so many holes in your bag. Like credit cards. I see people that don't need a purse. Hey, I got a coach. I would suggest if you buy a coach, buy it from the guy who's got him on the top of the roof of his car. Because you're only buying it for a show anyhow, and so if you're buying it for a show, then get a phony. It's cheaper than the real thing. 